Section 85 expands what we already know about uh, exponents in, in the following sense. Uh, we are, we've already talked about what exponents mean. If I take a number and I raise it to the power n, so b to the n, that just means I multiply b by itself n times. So b times b times b times b, n times. Except that definition only works for natural numbers, right? So where b is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all, all of the counting numbers. So we made this definition. We said, well, let's expand this a little bit. Well, let's define b to the 0 to just be 1. But what about the integers? What about negative whole numbers? So things like uh, b to the minus 5, b to the minus 12. And here's our definition. We're going to define this, and now we can handle uh, negative, uh, negative exponents as b to the minus n is 1 over b to the n. So for example, something like 2 to the minus 3, well that would mean 1 over 2 to the positive 3, which is just 2 cubed is 8, 1 over 8. Okay, so there's our definition. This is, this is how we handle negative exponents. We, we treat this as just 1 over b to the n. And there's several important properties here we need to discuss. And here's our properties. Uh, number one, we've already talked about before, if I've got b to the m times b to the n, well, the way you handle that is you just add the exponents together. I'm pointing it out again that, that even though we had that for, for uh, natural numbers, for natural exponents, uh, this is true now for even uh, all integers. So now if we, have, if we have negative exponents as well, this property still holds. The next one says if I have b to the m and then I raise that again, if I exponentiate that again to the n, the way you handle this is you multiply the exponents together. Uh, three and four are really important properties but closely related. Uh, if I've got a product of two numbers, a times b, and I raise that to the n, what I could do is just take a to the n and multiply that by b to the n. Similarly, if I have a quotient, a over b to the n, I can take a to the n and divide it by b to the n. All right, so something like, uh, something like 3 over 4 squared would just be 3 squared over 4 squared, which is, of course, 9 over 16. And lastly, this is uh, closely related to our first uh, property number 1, where we've got uh, b to the m times b to the n, says you add the exponents together. This is now, maybe I should have gone with b, b to the m over b to the n. So instead of multiplying, now I'm dividing, what you do is you subtract the exponents. So this would be b to the m minus n. And this shouldn't really come as any surprise if you, if you combine everything we already know. Uh, b to the m over b to the n, that's b to the m times 1 over b to the n, right? Just think of it like that. Uh, b to the m times 1 over b to the n. Well, that's, of course, b to the m times 1 over b to the n is b to the minus n. And now using property number one, how do we handle multiplying two bases together to different exponents? Well, you add them together. So this becomes b to the m plus minus n, which is minus n. And that is exactly what I have right here. So let's do some examples. All right, first example is this one. We want to simplify this expression as much as we can. And my math lab often phrases it this way to indicate that we all get the same simplification. Uh, write your answer using positive exponents only. So of course, this is not the answer because I have a whole bunch of negative exponents. Um, there's two different ways you could proceed. You could actually distribute this minus 1 to the top and bottom right now. But I'm going to simplify the inside first. So, how do we handle division? Well, this becomes, we subtract the exponents, right? So this becomes y to the minus 6 minus the bottom exponent. y to the minus 6 minus minus 2. Make sure you have double negatives there. And that's all raised to the minus 1. All right, so this was our last property we just had. If you divide uh, same bases to different exponents, you just subtract the exponents. So that's y to the minus 6 minus minus 2. What is that? Minus 6, minus minus 2, minus 6, plus 2. That's y to the minus 4 to the minus 1. 
And then our second property said, okay, if you double exponentiate, if you've got y to the minus 4 raised to the minus 1, now you just multiply the exponents together. So y to the minus 4 times minus 1 is y to the positive 4. And this certainly matches up with the form we wanted, right? We just wanted positive exponents only. Well, positive exponent, 4. Let's do another one. Right, really similar to the one we just did, just with more terms thrown in. Uh, again, I've got x's on top and the bottom. I've got y's on top and the bottom. So let's, let's sort of group all of our x's and y's together. Uh, let's see. I've got 8 over 6. Let's just leave this alone for now. 8 over 6. But then what do I have? We've got x minus 2 divided by x minus 5. So again, how do we handle division? We subtract, right? So this is x to the minus 2 minus the bottom exponent, minus minus 5. And then I've got y to the minus 4 minus the bottom exponent, so minus 2. Here, notice I don't have a, neg a double negative. It's just minus the exponent, minus 4, minus 2. Uh, let's simplify this. 8 over 6, that's 4 thirds. All right, factor 2 out of, the, out of the top and bottom and cancel them. Here we've got minus 2 plus 5, that's x cubed. And here I've got minus 4 minus 2 is y to the minus 6. Not wrong, nothing's wrong here. Uh, but the answer said using positive exponents only. So uh, positive exponents only, I need to write y to the minus 6 as 1 over y to the 6, right? This is 4 thirds x cubed times 1 over y to the 6. And this whole thing can be cleaned up and made a lot prettier if we just put all, all the stuff on top in the numerator, all the stuff on the bottom in the denominator. So this is 4x cubed over 3y to the 6. So this is an important skill. This is an important skill being able to work with exponents, simplify expressions that look like this down to much simpler, nicer looking forms. And I'd like to do one more that, that, uh, that refers back to our last section, which is I've got 1 plus x to the minus 1 over 2 plus x to the minus 2, and I want to simplify this and express it, express it using positive exponents only. So uh, let's see, this is 1 plus 1 over x over 2 plus 1 over x squared. All right, and now this is a compound fraction from last time. If I want to simplify, simplify this further, what I want to do is combine the tops and bottoms into single fractions. And uh, then I can divide them from there. Right? So let's see, what does this become? Multiply top and bottom by x. I've got x over x. So this becomes x plus 1 over x. And then divided by, multiply top and bottom by x squared. This will become 2x squared plus 1 over x squared. How do you divide fractions? Well, you multiply by the reciprocal, right? So this becomes x plus 1 over x times x squared over 2x squared plus 1. And it doesn't look like there's a whole lot I can do here. I can cancel x with x squared to leave just one of those. But otherwise, it doesn't look like there's much I can do. This is x times x plus 1. Just writing this in a different order, x plus 1 times x, x times x plus 1, uh, times 2x squared plus 1. To cancel any further, I'd have to find a common factor in the bottom here, but this isn't going to factor at all. So this is as far as we can take this. And that's almost the whole section, but if we, we go back to the topic, uh, it, was, it was integer exponents and scientific notation. So let's say a few words about scientific notation. Alright, so scientific notation is uh, just another way of writing numbers. Typically we use it for either really big or really small numbers that, that have a whole bunch of zeros in them and 
writing a bunch of zeros takes up a whole bunch of space. So this is just a, a space saving mechanism. A number of the form A, where A is some number, any decimal number, uh, decimal representation of number, between 1 and 10. So A times 10 to the N, where N is some integer. Uh, any number of this form is said to be in scientific notation. So for example, here, like I said, we're going to be working with big numbers or really small numbers. Here I've got 47,000. So I want to write this in scientific notation. Uh, all I have to do is sort of look at my, my first string of numbers until I get to the first, uh, until I get to just having a whole bunch of zeros left over. So here I've got 47. Well, I want a number between 1 and 10. So I'm going to write this as 4.7. 4.7 times 10 to the something. What is my power going to be? Well, really all you have to do is think about, think about how far you have to move the decimal. Right? I've moved my decimal from here up to between the 4 and the 7. So how far does my decimal have to move? Well, it has to move one place, two places, three places, four places. So this is 4.7 times 10 to the 4. And if you think about it, that makes total sense, right? 10 to the fourth, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 is 10,000. So 47,000 is 4.7 times 10,000. Yeah. Uh, so 4.7 times 10,000. Awesome. So this is, what, uh, this is how you get this, this integer here. You, uh, you just think, how many places do I have to move my decimal point to get, it, uh, to get it to where I want, 4.7. So similarly here, okay, uh, I'm looking at 5 followed by just a string of zeros, so I'm going to write this as 5 times 10 to the something. Uh, where do I want to move my decimal to? Well, I want to move it to here, right, 5.0, so 5. Uh, let's see, so I start with my decimal here. One, two, three, four, five, six places. So this will be 10, except now I'm moving it to the right. I'm making it smaller. I'm making this, in the, or sorry, I'm, uh, I'm working with zero point something. So this is going to be a negative exponent. This is 10 to the minus 6. Is that what we said? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so six places to the right, moving the decimal six places to the right. Uh, corresponds to a negative exponent, 5 times 10 to the minus 6. So these are our two answers so far. Now let's just go in reverse. Let's start with a number in, in scientific notation and, uh, and write it in regular form. So I've got 3.07. That'll be my first string of numbers, 3.07. And I'm going to move this decimal uh, eight places to the right to make it bigger, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's see, we've got zero, 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 and the decimal goes right there. Is that eight places? We'll count back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It looks good. I'm gonna throw in some commas to make it more readable. Uh, every third digit. So 307 million. It's 3.07 times 10 to the 8. So not a whole lot, not a whole lot to this uh, scientific notation stuff, but you should be aware of what it is and, and how it works. It's just rewriting it, rewriting your number in this form. It's some number between 1 and 10 times 10 to an exponent. And that exponent tells you how many places you move the decimal either to the right or to the left.